We're going to open the floor for questions. Uh, Risa, were you surprised at the number of people interested in uh, getting the information of whether they're positive or negative uh, for the disease? <coughs> well, I actually had a question about whether you posed this in the setting of now or in the setting of if there was a, an effective disease-modifying treatment. But it's very encouraging, 74%. I hope they all volunteer for the A4 trial. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why I asked you. Uh, on the screen is all the energy going around. We call it the decade of the brain, the best minds wanted. Uh, George, look at all those initiatives, the $100 million brain mapping, uh, work out of DARPA, the president's budget, uh, Napa, which of those do you feel has the most promise, uh, most immediate promise? Well, uh, since I was uh, a champion of us getting a, 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 a date by which we were going to find a means of prevention and effective treatment, I would go to the end because I do think that by setting a goal, if you believe it, you will cause your practices to change in order to meet your goal rather than simply finding ways of improving the way you're doing business as usual. So I find the setting of goal to be a disruptive factor in the way that people think about the paths they ought to take. So I, I will put my sort of, I mean, all of these are important because some of them have additional resource, but they're trivial additional resources, quite frankly. The FDA's adjustment, I think, is vitally important because if they wouldn't adjust in light of the science, then we're, we're stuck between a science that is saying you need to go early and an FDA that says you've got to prove you know, changes in functional uh, abilities much later in the disease, and then you're stuck. So the FDA's uh, uh, leaning forward on this is vitally important, but I think all of this is beginning to get caused by the fact that we're setting a goal and we're beginning to believe in it and set milestones in order to how to get there. Here's a question from the audience uh, for Dr. Sperling. What sensitive cognitive measures will you be using in the A4 trials for efficacy? So we're um, using a combination of measures that we've seen from multiple different um, studies that change over this preclinical very early stage. So for those of you who are neuropsychologists, there are two measures of episodic memory. So one is list learning and another is a paragraph, and that combination is important. But also um, testing of what we call executive function or time testing, because we know that people's speed of processing, especially multitasking, gets slower. And then we have a global test that also looks at orientation. So that's our main composite. And our exploratory test, which I'm very excited about, is a new measure on the iPad in which we are looking at uh, memory as well as uh, other uh, measures using CogState and some we've developed, including face name memory. So we'll do both of those. Um, but the primary is a more standard neuropsychological test that have been validated in lots of studies over time. Rudy, do you have a comment? I was going to ask a question. Of do you, executive function is really what fails and, and puts people in nursing homes. They can't keep track of cooking and answering the phone and not bringing down the house. And where would you say in that graph you had in terms of the earliest changes, executive function sits? And are we not spending enough emphasis on executive function as one of the earliest changes that we should, we should try to hit with, with uh, drug trials? Right. I think it's a really good question. And the question is, how do you measure that aspect of executive function, that you know, seeing the train going down the tracks and figuring out what you have to do, all of these things? That's hard on a single test. Um, so in addition to the test, we've actually worked hard on these kind of patient reported outcomes mm -hmm. that describe when do you have more uh, difficulty programming your iPhone or figuring out how to organize a dinner or a right. party. So I do think we're getting at those questions, but I don't think we have a perfect okay. cognitive test for right. that and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be developing more. So trail making A and B executive. Not well, so that. trail making A and B is a good test for the MCI to AD dementia. It right. definitely changes in there. It actually doesn't change very much in this preclinical to okay. early MCI group, um, but maybe there are more sensitive uh, tests that tap that same kind of uh, multitasking. Here's a question for uh, Dr. Kozauer. Isn't uh, there an initiative to speed up, is it uh, CAM, CAMD? Is it CAMD? Mm -hmm. uh, an industry knob regarding, sorry, I can't read this. 
What is being speeded up? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. So I, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert in CAMD, but CAMD is a consortium of uh, different representatives from industry as well as the agency that sort of works collaboratively in a pre-competitive space. And so there are uh, efforts by CAMD to uh, attempt to what we call qualify uh, different biomarkers for use for diagnosis in MCI population, um, uh, cognitive testing that could be used in earlier populations. So that the, the idea is if you can bring companies and the interested parties together in a pre-competitive way, you're going to really cut down a lot of the duplicative effort and, and hopefully make progress quicker. So that's kind of the concept behind CAMD. I'd like you to take a look at the screen. I mean, this is a real cost driver. And Peter, I'd like you to sort of look look at some of these issues around clinical trials eating so much of the budgets, um, enrollment dropping off, recruitment eating up 40% of trials. Uh, comments, Peter? Uh, this is also the opportunity and the delays, by the way, of the issue of recruitment. 22, 22 months for ADNI. The idea that if we all stood up and said, this disease is unacceptable for our future, we're going to do a data dump for science and help the process. Could we speed up and change these numbers? So. Right, so I, I guess I'd say a few things. The, the, the slide you showed is, sheds light on something very real and, and troubling, I think. You know, the costs of these trials are high, and we need to think about making them more efficient. And there are initiatives from the FDA and elsewhere to try to think about ways to do that by uh, having accelerated uh, approval, by having adaptive clinical trial designs, by um, trying to uh, engage reimbursement authorities with regulatory authorities early on so that there's the pathway to eventual reimbursement is, is made more efficient by allowing more uh, conditional approval with, with uh, either risk management programs and or data analyses in the post-launch environments. I think all of those are very uh, useful, promising, and, and need a lot more uh, work. Here's a question for George. Are the NPGs involved with the Alzheimer's initiatives also expending efforts to promote increased NIH and NSF budgets or combat sequester? Uh, our, our advocacy efforts aimed at increasing resources. The answer is yes. Uh, and indeed, to some extent, uh, even in fiscally constrained world, uh, uh, Francis Collins at the NIH is using more discretion on the little discretionary budget that he has to lean towards Alzheimer's. So within a physically constrained world, he's leaning forward, and last year was 50 million, this year 40 million, in devoting some additional uh, money to the disease. The President last year proposed $100 million additional for research coming out of a prevention fund. Congress said no. He's, pre he's presented that again this year uh, as built into uh, NIA's uh, budget uh, for Alzheimer's. We'll see what Congress uh, does, but there's no question that we are uh, deeply supporting that with all of the women against Alzheimer's, researchers against Alzheimer's, African Americans against Alzheimer's, all of the suite of people that we are engaged in. Leaders Engaged in Alzheimer's Disease is a 60-organization uh, group of Alzheimer's-serving companies, uh, NGOs, and research organizations. They're advocating for it. Um, I, think, uh, I think the challenge here is that even these amounts of money are pretty trivial. Uh, so uh, there are a couple of uh, champions now. Uh, the, the public members of the Napa Advisory Council have recommended that we quickly ramp up to $2 billion a year. Now, that's a level still short of heart disease and stroke. Uh, it's a level substantially short of HIV AIDS, and it's uh, one-third of what uh, we're investing in cancer, where we've seen uh, death rates going down. So we've advocated for that, and we're about to see a Senate champion uh, step out and advocate uh, for that very forcefully in the Senate, and she will be supported. Having said that, that's still inadequate. Uh, and if you look at the global scope of this and the global cost of this, and, and I take Peter's point that there's a cost to diagnostics and therapy as well. But if you look at the, I think, the net savings that most modeling would show, uh, the amount of resource devoted around the world is still under, uh, underscaled. The United States invests against what it thinks is the problem. Uh, UK invests against what it thinks it may be the problem in the UK. Uh, but this is a global uh, impact. And if you look at the 36 to 40 million victims today and the 100 million caregivers, 
there are a lot of victims and caregivers in parts of the world that have no research establishment. So quite frankly, if you look at it from a global perspective, we are way underinvesting. We're really underinvesting in the United States, but in terms of the global impact of this disease, we need a global mechanism and a global financing mechanism. That's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it's going to take us two to three years to get there in my estimation, but the amount of resource um, uh, devoted in terms of public investment and research as well as public attention to the incentives that might be given to industry in order to induce uh, greater investments on their part, still are way uh, underscaled.